Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration. Don't worry, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about Cobra X in this episode. I just wanted to show off what the uh, the changes I've made here before I got on to um, far more interesting things. So, the, what, what I've done here is I've rebuilt the, uh, the Cobra X to put it to, so that I can beacon it and module it and stuff. So in the last episode, I beefed it up, put in a lot more... Um, a lot more centrifuges just to get the uranium through a lot quicker and I explained exactly how that was working and in, in this one I've now rolled all of those up into circles to put them around this beacon in the middle and that means that essentially it's exactly the same design as we had before except instead of them being out, run out in a line they're now looped around, let's say looped around the beacon so you've got exactly the same arrangement of a chest and some inserters on this side we've got one here that's grabbing the um, the 238 as it goes past to make sure we've got enough in the chest then that feeds into the into the, into the centrifuge and again it spits out in exactly the same way and so every so often you get these blocks little blocks of 10 um, 235 coming around and they're being filtered out by this inserter and I've got an overly complicated system here where the uh, the 238 gets fin passed in at the top it goes around here we've got these splitters that will send some off to the next set of machines then to the next one and so on so eventually it goes all the way around absolutely everything and I spent a little bit of time wondering if I could do a sort of a have a system where it was where there was only one belt going around. And I pro to be honest, I probably could have, but I designed one of these and then I copied and pasted it and then and then fiddled with it until it worked. And and this is working, as you can see by the way we're getting little dribbles of um of the two three five coming out like this. And by the way that all of the um centrifuges are working, which is I'm, I'm quite quite pleased with it. So apparently we are actually producing the two three eight faster than it's being used. Every so often the ammunition pulls a load of it through as well and we get a bit of a, a little bit of a shortage but I think we're getting to the point where it's coming in faster than it's going out so maybe at some point we'll have it actually full and for some reason somewhere in this process and I haven't managed to work out yet where exactly where yet there's something that's spitting out a load of oh it's here this one you should be doing that my sunshine <laughs> you should be taking out the other one not the uh <laughs> yeah, you should be doing the 235, not the 238. There we go, that's going to get rid of all of this stuff that's coming out on the wrong side. So, um, yeah, that will hopefully get that behaving properly now. And so the way this works is, is the 235 should always be on the outside of the belt and the 238 should always be on the inside. And that should, emphasis on the should, should mean that it never backs up and, and breaks itself. Uh, there should always be room for the 235 to get out to allow more 238 in to keep everything running. Time will tell whether that's actually true or not. Let's see how much we've got now. So with this, with these upgrades, we've now got up to 18,000 in this station. So we still haven't even got a single train, and it's going to take, I worked out, two trains and an extra half wagon in order to launch a rocket. I may end up just going sod it once we've got a full train through and just launching the rocket anyway. Because if we look over at the, at the rocket launch system over here, you can see we've still not had any, uh, any of the 235 come through, so... It's a slow process, but there's not a lot I can do about it. So, more interesting than that, here, here, here in orbit, yes, the energy science. Uh, energy science 1 and 2, at least the catalogues for that, are now completed. So we've got the uh, system, I mean, we've got the, got the diagram for the energy science here that shows the, the four data types you need to make the first, the first energy science. So we've got 1, oops, 1, 2, 3, one, two, three, four, making it here. And this one isn't running. This is the one that requires uranium. And I've used up all of the uranium I had knocking around up here in orbit, which is a little bit annoying. But that's why I'm trying to make more on down on from Norvis. It gets passed up here. And so we've got over here, we've now got this chest here filling up. We've got 500 of the uh, tier one catalogs. Um, it's not many, but it's, you know, it's gradually getting there. It's, it's quite expensive to make these things. Then after that we've got the tier 2's being made. So this one here this is the um, the one that I've been calling the London Eye Science uh, force field data um, and that takes the these these two so that's why they're being split off here to go to the computers to make the tier 1 catalogues and then up here to make the force field data as well so we've uh, we've got the two things going on there. Unfortunately this one has ground to a halt um, because there's too many memory cards of all things being packed coming out of this pass through and going back in there. Um, this doesn't take memory cards, which is why I haven't just fed them back in round here. That would be the easy way to do it. Instead, I thought, well, these two should be making data cards at about the same rate, so if I do this, it should be okay. But I guess this one ran first and then stopped because this was full, 
and then this one started running and, and blocked up like this. So I think what I'm going to have to do is put a chest in here as an intermediate buffer. And I think this is probably going to get through them slowly enough because it takes no, two, only two seconds for it to run each time. Um, but still, it's... Um, it, it two seconds two seconds is much much quick, much much less time than is required to unload from a chest so that that should be okay then going on those go on up there obviously we've then got the system making all the various different colored clouds green green clouds coming in here to make the football data um, also known as subatomic um, that one's now full this one is making the uh, atom is this one atomic no quantum quantum and this one doesn't doesn't do it doesn't require any inputs it just I like this it just looks at a card makes it cold and goes either yes or no and spits out the appropriate outputs from there which is a bit ridiculous but it's all very quantum and then we've got all of those except the one that's stalled and they're being turned into the tier two catalogs and they come over here and we've got 447 of those made so far so again that's going going reasonably well i'm um I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. We've made we've made a good start on those, and eventually we can start passing them off to a science production somewhere else. So I've been thinking about how I'm going to um, how I'm going to deal with all of this, all of the science I'm creating. And as I've been saying, the idea the idea is to to feed it all into one central location. So there's a couple of things here. I've been I've been also been thinking a little bit about the astronomic science. So they're all relatively straightforward, at least up to sort of level. T certainly tier one and two are pretty pretty simple you just make massive massive quantities of these um uh, what, what they even called the the um plate plate things and then you put them into various different types of telescope to get out all these different types of data um and then you've got grav gra gravitational data for these these two here um and they all all of these tend to will churn through from the um astronomic data which well, there are two ways to make it. There's the tier one method, which just uses the top three, or there's the tier two method, which uses some of the others. Um, and I think is a bit more efficient. So we get tier one method uses takes in three, spits out three, or tier two takes in five, spits out ten. So that's clearly better, especially as the um, the, the other two, the the the, the um, microwave and the X-ray data are exactly the same as the other one they just they just take in um they just use a different type of telescope so i think that's going to be pretty straightforward to, to and it'll double the the amount of these i produce which is a good thing because if you look at this diagram all these blue lines there are so many of these things being used for all kinds of different 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 levels of the um, of the science going through here so uh, making these on mass is going to be very very important but i think this is just going to be and if we if we look over at the at the way I'm doing this in uh, on my, for my tier one science, there's a lot of a lot of infrastructure being taken up here, and I think there's probably going to be fairly heavy demands on belt throughput for this, especially for the um, for the, for, the, for these plate things that are coming out and then being exposed. But hopefully I'll be able to just cr cram enough down as one or two belts. But we'll we'll see how that goes. I'll make sure I leave space for a lot of those things to be passed through. Um, then you've got the various different data cards coming through, and I think I think I think the challenge with the astronomic data isn't so much any of the recipes; they're all pretty straightforward. It's just getting enough throughput of all of the things that all, all of the plates that are being exposed by the telescopes. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and then then on when you get onto the tier three, you start to need the uh, the are these things microwave. Um, no, I can't remember what those are. Let's have a let's let's have a quick look. So tier three, you need um, was it? Yes, yeah, so you need these gamma ray detectors for for one of those, and then you need aeroframe scaffolds for another. So there's there's a, a certain amount of complication in as you go higher and higher up the tiers, but but that's what you'd expect and what you what you want in inverted commas from this game to make it to keep the challenge up. And then to finally for tier four, there's just a bit of pass through, some pink clouds, and then the um, asteroid probes. So those are going to be um, interesting. I've not actually looked into what you need for pink clouds. Let's have a quick look at that. To see how difficult that appears to be. Uh, that was the wrong one. This, this, these ones, micro particle streams. <clears throat> okay, that's not too bad. I can make all of those. So, so the astronomic data, sh astronomic science should be reasonably straightforward. Just pump all of these things through and um, and cross your fingers, hope for the best. The only difficult ones I was saying is the ast is the is the bot is the final one, <laughs> which is interesting to look at. You go in here, you go asteroid probe. Yep, it doesn't show me what you need to make. It turns out it's because you need to launch asteroid probes uh, which are shown separately. 
probe. Asteroid probe data. Asteroid belt probe. So there we go. You need to put you need to do all put all of these in to make the probe, and then you need to launch it from an asteroid probe facility that needs to be in an asteroid field. So at some point, I'm going to need to set up another another facility in. Um, in an asteroid field. And I, I found some asteroid fields, so it's not going to be difficult. Um, there's let's 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 organize astro astronomically like this. So we can we can find the ones that are in um, in Kalidus orbit because they're going to be the ones that are easy to get to. Um, so we've got the Kalidus asteroid belt one here. It's only it's only 3000 delta v away. That's that's manageable. It's also got loads of beryl in it. So I don't know. Is this actually going to be useful? I could mine it from here. I could, I could ship it off to somewhere to uh, to process it. I suspect it's not worth it, though. I think I'm probably just going to carry on pulling barrel up from frost. Or we'll see. Maybe when frost starts to run out of barrel, I'll start pulling it here. Because these, these are interesting. Because you get um, really small but really, really dense chunks of the ore. So this is 19 million. But it's quite small. Um, that was the wrong button. Take me back to Take me back to the surface. Was it over here? Yeah. Here we go. So as you can see, it's a really small f um, field of the of the um, the actual stuff we're trying to mine of the of the ore, but it's really really dense. It's at seventy two thousand per square in the middle of it. So if I can get my um, mining speed up enough, perhaps just through sheer application of speed modules, or maybe, um, then it might actually be worthwhile. And then I can possibly ship it by, by rocket from here down over to. Um, over to, over to frost where I can actually start to, mine, to to process it slightly more efficiently. And there's another patch of it down here. This again is similar. We've got 25,000 in a single square, 7 million in that tiny little patch. So this might be a good one to come through just because then I've got a base there if I want to expand out further. Um, and that was what? That was... It's not telling me how much delta V to get there. It's, Oh, because I'm, I'm already there as far as it's concerned. Or I can go out to the belt, asteroid belt 2, which is not iron one, so there's going to be a lot, enormous quantities of iron in probably in the same way. Um, that's probably less u probably less useful. I think I'll go for this asteroid belt and just, just launch from there, because that seems like a sensible way to do it. And then once I've done all of that, I can then start thinking about actually making the science packs. And... Well, I suppose actually I could start thinking about making the science packs a bit sooner. I'm, I'm probably going to need to, uh, just to, to get things flowing a bit. Uh, but one of but one the the reason I've got all of these sort of spikes sticking off like this is is to en enable me to start doing the um, the things f further out uh, on 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 them. And sci and I think doing the science is going to take quite a lot of space. So if we look at the science butterfly here, this gives a, a nice idea of how the science is going to go. Now this is a slightly simplified diagram. Each one of the science packs does also require certain inputs. So for example for, um, I think it's for energy science, let's, let, let's actually look this up so I get this right. Okay this isn't the one I was going to look at but it'll do as an example. So for, for, the, for energy science, for tier 1 you need holmium plate, nice and easy. For tier 2 you need holmium cable, so you need to do something with the holmium plate, add plastic in this case. For tier 3 you need holmium solenoids, which is the holmium cable from before and more holmium. And then for tier 4, you're going to need a quantum processor, which is holmium... Oh, this is a little bit more difficult than the one I was looking at before. So this is cable, plate, you also need blue circuits, and then one of the one of the data packs. So that's hmm, going to make this slightly more awkward. I'm going to have to think about that one. One of the other ones, maybe it was... Maybe it was astro, astronomic. Yeah, that takes beryllium plate for the first one. Aeroframe pole, which is beryllium plate, which is just made from beryllium plate for the second one. Then aeroframe scaffold, which is aeroframe pole and more beryllium for the third. And then um, aeroframe bulkhead, which you oh in this case it's aeroframe scaffold, some beryllium plate, and a low density structure. So it makes it a little bit more complicated, but only slightly. So as I'm saying, you need all of those things extra to put in there as well. But essentially, each one you bring in. You bring in your um, your catalogs. You combine them to make insights, and you can combine as many of the different levels as you want. You can have just one, one and two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And the more you combine, the more efficient it gets, and the more output you get for the for your inputs. And you combine all of those to get your insights, the cylinders, and then you combine cylinders from various different disciplines of science. And again, it can be from one, two, three, or eventually four once you've done the research to get to that level. And that makes the significant data. And again, as before, the more of those different, the more the different ones you combine, the more efficient the process is, the more output you get for your input. Then you can combine 
um, you can combine it, a catalog, an insight, and a significant data all back together to make the, along with the exotic material thing for that particular tier to make the science packs, and then you can cram all of those into a into the science labs and to do the actual research and get the stuff you're you're after. So that's that's what this is this is gearing up for essentially in the end. We've got the energy one here, energy two here. We're going to carry on up here with energy three, energy four. Want to have worked those, worked out how to make those. But I think before that, I'm probably going to do astro, astro one, two, three, and four down here off this station. And this one is currently this is sort of almost a, a basic a basic station that hasn't been hasn't really been start ha hasn't been. No, this this is the sort of the basic area that I would start with, and then go from here. I'll go on to build up an actual proper station because as you can see, what we've got here is. A station to drop off miscellaneous stuff, whatever it is that's needed, um, and they can be programmed as required. We've got the cooling systems to make the manage to manage the various different tiers of, of cooling, and then we've got some power to keep it all running, and a station to drop off the coolant to get all of this to get this going. So this is essentially a basic a, the basic starting point for one of these science systems and I'm going to use these for all four science packs and then again for the for the main science system as well um, I'm not sure what this is that's supposed to be a box full of uh, scaffold I'm not sure what that's doing there so that's how that's how, I, how we're going to start off with all of them and then from there we'll just build up as appropriate get the correct ingredients in and start building so that's going to be well that's going to be the topic of the next stream um, by the time this video goes out, you will, of course, you, the, stream, the stream will have happened. So, um, if, if you want to go back and watch it, then please do. Or if you've already watched it, then I hope you enjoyed it, and, uh, and we'll come back for future ones. Uh, yeah, so we'll we'll see how that goes, and then in the next episode, I shall talk about the um, further science production I've been getting up to. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video, and. Um, do let me know how you what you think of how, how it's going except for this bit of rail here i know that's i know that's bad ignore that but generally yes as i say thank you for watching i'll see you next time and um goodbye <laughs>